Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm about to tell you all in the next couple of hours is unfiltered, unfettered, scientifically proven facts of life. The truth is going to piss you off before it sets you free. And it's also going to hurt a hell of a lot. So, if you already know the truth, just think of this video as a confirmation of everything that you already knew. I do not have to tell you this, but please, if you're offended by anything that I'm about to say, for the love of fuck, go to another YouTube channel, go to another dimension, go to another fucking planet, I don't care. If you're offended by anything that is about to be said in this video, DO NOT FUCKING WATCH IT! Because you already knew what was going to go down, and you choose instead to click on this video. So please, if you're not here for the truth, why the hell are you looking at my channel? Honestly. I'm not even going to really take up any more than maybe a couple of hours of your time, but if you listen very closely, you will see the fucking pain that comes out of these lips. So I want you to listen carefully, because... My story is your story, and your story is my story. We all share the same story, but we leave 7.6 billion different lives. And they all connect in such a way. And it's really, it's really, really funny. By the way, by the way, by the way, I should point out, I should point out. You know, history, they say that history is told by the winners. 
that's not true. History is also told by the losers, those who were oppressed the most, that have to pay the most. You know, in, in, there was a song called Twilight of the Gods by Bathory, based upon an opera of the same name by Wagner from some century and a half ago. But, you know, that song says that those who paid the most win. That's actually true. And you don't have to pay the most money. You just have to pay the most in in freedom. Because you, you have to risk every bit of your freedom in order to stand up for everything that is right with this world, namely God. I'll, I'll give you a few examples. You know, the American Civil War, that's an example. It was started and orchestrated by the Rothschild dynasty, who used a divide-and-conquer strategy to take America back by creating a conflict between North and South, which would have been Canadian-British under Lionel Rothschild and French colonialist under Napoleon III and James Rothschild, respectively. See, Honest Abe Lincoln, the greatest president of the 19th century and one of the greatest who ever lived, he opposed this by issuing the greenback to fund its defense against the international bankers, interest-free and redeemable in gold, all government printed. The Rothschilds responded by saying, Well, we can't do that, Lincoln, so we're just going to have our poster boy, John Wilkes Booth, from our Golden Circle Knights kill you instead. Which they actually did five days after Robert E. Lee surrendered at Apotomax on April the 14th. Keep in mind, the Civil War ended on the 9th of that month, in that year. At Ford Theater, somewhere in... Well, I'm not going to say, because I don't want to put words in God's mouth. But, basically, the main issue was about who would be in charge of the money flow and the banks. The secondary issue was the issue of enslavement of humanity. But it was also an equal deciding factor alongside the financial aspect of the banks and who would get the opportunity and privilege of controlling them. And, and you know, speaking of the banks, you know, I don't usually trust the banks unless I absolutely have to. Well, most do, but some actually don't. Some actually work for you. You know, some work for you. They don't work for them. They don't work for the Rothschilds. They work for you. But, you know, it's, it's so funny to me because there are only three countries left as of, as of me talking to you now that do not have a Rothschild central bank, namely Cuba, North Korea, and Iran. Of those three countries, how many do you think would probably have a Rothschild bank by the end of this decade? I would probably speculate and say two of them. Mainly North Korea and Iran, because they're both hotbeds for terrorism and genocide and war criminal activity and democracy. And the same countries without those central banks currently are being wrongly targeted by the American troops on behalf of the Democratic Party, as were the indigenous in Jackson's 1830s trail of tears, just as Jesus Christ was during his crucifixion in the year, say, 32 or 33 A.D., some 1985 years ago. And just like North Korea was under Kim's Il-sung and Jung-il, 
than the Jews were during Hitler's Holocaust, which is kind of ironic. Now, now here's the kicker. Six years after the Civil War ends, America's treasury goes bankrupt due to the effects of the Civil War, so they do possibly the worst thing anyone can do. At which point, they didn't really have much of an option at the time as everyone else in the world were bankrupt, as were they. So they turned to the same people who had all the money in the world, the Rothschilds, to bail them out, which led to the 41st Congress and that absolute piece of dog crap, Ulysses S. Grant, passing the illegal, treasonous 1871 D.C. Organic Act, which turned America, or what used to be the United States of America, into Adam Weiss House Incorporated. And that is not, mind you, what the natives who founded this country initially some thousands of years prior and the guys who came to America to found what would become modern America in 1776, namely Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine. You know, given Thomas Paine probably wasn't one of them, but he was one of the inspirations that led to the colonists going to America to seek a better life and start a new country country, as well as John Adams and James Madison, those people were mostly Christian. And the fact that America is, for the most part, completely Christian-made and founded, meaning modern America, because keep in mind, the America that was thousands of years ago, previously inhabited long before the Europeans ever thought of coming here by that point as a whole was completely you know America was America back then but then the colonists did what they did and that changed but the fact that America was completely Christian made from God himself is still true somehow and, and of those four people Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine John Adams and James Madison three of them would become presidents and Thomas Paine died before they came along so it just makes sense right okay okay I'll, I'll tell you this one here's another one here's another one Hold on, hold on. Here's another one. Here's another one. Get this. Get this. I recently had an argument with a guy named... I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm, okay, you know what? I'm gonna tell his name. His name is Martin O'Rourke. He's a legit liberal. His brain is essentially permanently broken. Not even God can fix it. But... A few people got into an argument with this guy regarding his liberal, anti-human views. He says, I'm not a very incentive to be thankful for, but I know a hostage situation when I see one. Your president's a fool, the dangerous fool, baby wants the law, why? Here's how I responded. Martin, as much as I respect you or anyone else, you, your Democrat SJW friends, the Rob Shields and the Illuminati are the problem. In life, it's problem solvers versus problem starters. Problem solvers like I voted Trump in 2016 and well in 2020. As people like yourselves and your pals in the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, the SMN, the MRS, the FCC, accuse us of not being what you are, meaning retarded, even though we do everything to secure a healthy future for our kids and their kids and their kids, which leaves but one answer in your case, which means you are a problem starter. And, and you know what's funny? This guy responds by saying, It's not the ordinary people I have a problem with. I can assure you, though, your president has made America a laughing stock. And I responded by saying, I understand, Mr. O'Rourke, that you're as human as I am. But events 
such cases where even those in group homes who are legitimately mentally retarded with mental states equivalent to infants despite being adults, fully grown adults, would completely see right through your faceless, faceless lack of a story as they actually have moral compasses unlike you. And I value them very highly as being the unsung servants and savants of modern humankind. Unlike the Obama suck-ups you side with who are really who we should refer to as being, in their words and yours, retarded. And then this guy continues his argument by saying, It's up to the decent American people to get rid and bring back your moral decency. The ordinary American deserves it. And I say, you should also know, Martin, that I don't have to agree with anything you say despite my having utmost respect for you and anybody else. Especially since you only breathe wise out the system. The Codex Gigas sings the only Bible, in short. Rock shield indoctrinations and the countless falsehoods of this society of shadow governments and Luciferian, amphibian nihilists of demoralization. You know I know this? Because I'm an autist. And autism is an amazing cure. Not necessarily as much an illness or disease as claims. Have suggested. Perhaps you should be the one in need of a lifetime supply of decency as your prize, as your prize for playing God. And by the way, they always say to us that we're hung to repeat any history which we won't remember. And then he wants to add to his argument by saying, and then by the way, he's just digging his hole even deeper. He says, Plus Trump is ridiculously big down with another lie that's easily fact-checked just by listening to him the day before. Madness. Yes, I respond. And that's why you happily ignore problematic, problem-starting chips like 1871's Cataclysmic DC Organic Act, as I mentioned previously, that gave the Rothschilds full control of what was for centuries an indigenous native land founded by American Indians, just as your Bay Andrew Jackson's 1830s Trail of Tears nearly drove said natives into extinction and still rages today. Now, I'm not going to go any further into that argument, but what I can conclude for certain, what I can say for sure, without any question or doubt in my mind, is that in terms of the original founding fathers, because we know who the modern founding fathers of our country are, you know, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, you know, Patrick Henry. The original founding fathers of our country are the Red Clouds, the Geronimos, the Sitting Bulls, the Chief Josephs. Those who were in this country many centuries prior to Vikings Eric the Red and Leif Erikson, both father and son respectively, originally from Greenland, ever considering invading upon American soil to start with. So let's keep that in mind, right? Let's just keep that in mind and be done with that, right? Because, I mean, that's, that's the only thing we can do, which is the only thing any one of us can do. So at the end of the day, guess what? It all adds up. Regardless of how you see it, it adds up. Right, so here's what I find so funny. You know, Stormy Daniels, you know that porn star, right? Stormy Daniels is what Samantha Bee accuses 73 million of us human beings of being. A flash-flooding, blood-money, feckless cunt. Lisa Page is what Samantha B accuses 73 million of us human beings of being. A flash-flooding, blood-mudding, feckless cunt, because that's what she is. Uma Abedin, Michael Consensual Penis Wiener, and Hillary Clinton are actual first-class kiss-ass feckless cunts, just like their partner in crime, Samantha B. I'll give you another example. Hold on, hold on. This, this is just beginning, man. This is the beginning. This is just step one. Okay, Peter sucked my cock straw, James Comey, Rob Rosenstein, and the Bush and Clinton dynasties are just like their partner in crime, Samantha B. The feckless cunts. By the way, they went full frontal 
and went full retard towards the White House conspiracy, knowing good and well that they could have put us first, but chose not to because they're selectively retarded. Not that it means anything, but you know, I mean, that's just in, by the way. John wipes his butt with his hands carry as a feckless cunt, just like his partner in crime, Samantha B. It's like about going full formal, right? I mean, not, not that it means anything, but still. And, and, and get this, get this. The Vatican and all ways of democracy are just like their chess pawn and partner in crime, Samantha B. They're a bunch of first class, kiss ass, feckless cunts. Now you know why they all went full pearl. And, and, and here's another one. Jack, Jack B. Nimble, Jim Acosta, and Michael Hawking, Carbon Copy, and Ak Avenatti are just like their partner in crime, Samantha B. They're both feckless cunts. And they went full frontal on events, just like she did. You know, and, and, and here's another example. I'll, I'll give you another example. Kamala Harris and Samantha B. have one damning and very incriminating thing in common. They're both feckless cunts who are full frontal and are secret gay lovers to the great White House Rock Shield Rockefeller conspiracy. Okay, okay. No, no, hold on, hold on. Here's another example. You know the founders of Twitter, right? Jack Dorsey, Noah Glass, Biz Stone, Evan Williams. You know, Jack has Dorsey, Noah Glass wife, Biz takes a whiz stone, and Evan South of Evan Williams have one incriminating thing in common with Samantha B. They're all feckless cunts who went full frontal when they sold their bodies to the prostitution ring known as White House Conspiracy. And in your years, here's another one. Here's another one. Chuck, I fucked the Schumer Schumer. Coral, Corey, the gobbledygooker booker. And Nancy, I'm a great big hosky Pelosi. Are just like Samantha B. They're feckless cunts who went full frontal and sold their bodies to Rothschild and Rockefeller's prostitution ring, a Luciferian white top shin bohemian illuminism. And if that's not damning enough, then believe me, you haven't seen anything yet, man. You ain't seen nothing yet, man. I'm just getting started up in here. So many people in Hollywood put that particular description too. You know, you know George Lopez, the guy who pissed all over Trump's Hollywood Wall for Fame star. He's a feckless cunt, just like Samantha B. Kathy the Yiffin Griffin. She, I'm not even going to get into her because she posed a picture of herself holding the decapitated remains of Trump's head. But she's a feckless cunt too, just like Samantha B. You know. I'm, I'm going to give you another example. You know, you know Tom Cruise, right? The guy from Mission Impossible, from, from, you know, the, the poster guy for Scientology, the great big bastard waste of piss and wind. He's a feckless cunt, just like Samantha B. Every freaking Hollywood liberal sellout is a feckless cunt, just like Samantha B. And they all went full frontal with a great White South Rothschild Rockefeller Glenn Soros Obama conspiracy. Because that's what it is, people. It's a conspiracy. And you wonder why conspiracy theorists are so popular. Because they're right. And they always have been. They're the true journalists. You know, the, the mainstream media, they're a, bunch of, they're a bunch of feckless cunts. The people at CNN, they're a bunch of feckless cunts. The people at NBC, they're a bunch of feckless cunts. Everybody at CBS, they're a bunch of feckless cunts. The people at ABC, the people who made American Idol, the people who made talent shows like America's Got Talent and Got Talent in General and, and, and all these other rip-off talent shows, they're a bunch of feckless cunts. You know? James Patterson, he turned into a feckless cunt because he sold out to democracy when he co-wrote that book with Bill Clinton. The president is missing. Oh, my God, the president is missing. Run! But, yeah, he's a feckless cunt, too. 
I'll give another example. You know, Elijah, I fat to Louis Farrakhan and Barack Obama Cummings. You know, that guy is a feckless cunt, like, like Samantha B, a full frontal. And, by, and speaking of full frontal, he and Samantha B and the rest of the Democratic Party and all their satanic Luciferian bohemian counterparts went full frontal and went head first and went gay for the full freaking frontal white out conspiracy that secretly enslaves our world today. You know, I'll, I'll give another example. I'll give another example. Every single Democrat that's ever run for office in America and all over the world, they're a bunch of feckless cunts because they support Luciferianism. They support democracy. They support the enslavement of man. They support solicited, you know, I mean, it's just, unex it's inexcusable, man. These are the same people that like to play with aborted fetuses and fuck with aborted babies who were still the ones who came out of their mother's wounds. I mean, it's just, it's inexcusable, it's deplorable, it's irredeemable. Democracy is irredeemable. It failed when Andrew Jackson decided to found it in America when he did what he did in the War of 1812 started, and he let Britain burn down the original White House. By the way, the White House we know and love today, that was just the reconstructed one. The original White House was much different than the one we see today. Because when Andrew Jackass did what he did and started the War of 1812, by betraying James Madison's complete, undivided trust, by letting Britain invade whatever the hell happened and burned down the original White House, that started the War of 1812. You understand? And, and it's so simple, man. And it's so retardedly simple. Even a chicken in an actual animal farm can figure it out. But most people in general don't want to acknowledge it because they refuse to remember history, so they're bound to repeat it. It's unbelievable. Yay! Right, so I know precisely what you people are thinking right now, and I know exactly what's on your mind, and I'm going to expose it right here. And I'm going to keep exposing it for as long as this video's around. So let me, let me just tell you something. By the way, by the way, you remember when I talked about Abraham Lincoln, right? And how he was murdered by the Rothschild dynasty? Turns out the same thing happened to JFK, who ironically was da, 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 a Democrat. No, John F. Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, a Democrat, became president in 1961 and was president for 1,000 days. He was the best president, Democrat, of anybody's lifetime by becoming the only jackass to turn into a smartass and go full on face by helping the people instead of hurting them like all Democrats and probably half of all Republican leaders before and after him did combine. And the Rothschilds didn't take kindly to that, so they said to him, well, Kennedy, we warned you about shitting us. We warned you about not doing what our master Satan told us to tell you to do. So we're hiring Lee Harvey Oswald to blow your ass away. So this, this isn't all. This isn't all. You see, several generations before, you know, they started World War One by allowing a group of Serbians to kill and assassinate then Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and that's what started the First World War. Little did we know, our jackass president at the time, Woodrow Wilson, decided to force us into that war, which we had no business in participating in, by the way, and, and that's what started the whole darn mess. You understand? That's what started the whole mess. Now, you remember you remember George Bush's senior and junior and their respective successors, right? See, they wanted a new world disorder 
Not the new world order like we claim, but the new world disorder. They only they only portray it as being a new world order when in fact it's a more of a disorder than it ever was an order. So they started the ongoing and current illegal immigration crisis and have orchestrated and continue to orchestrate every mass shooting, every terrorist attack of the last 250 years and were responsible for inside jobs like the collusion between Franklin Delano Roosevelt and China to bomb Pearl Harbor and blame it on the Japanese who by the way were the scapegoats in all this they were, they were forced to do China's bidding they didn't have to do it but they were faced with the threat of extinction if they were not compliant enough to carry it out upon China's behest. So Japan had to do what they didn't have to do in the first place because, of course, they would be forced into extinction if they refused. And then, of course, Obama and company brought in ISIS and MS-13 and Antifa and SJWs dynasties and jackassery and all these other smut related democratic inspired terrorist plots including the so called Clinton Foundation the so called Obama Foundation the Publishers Clearinghouse which by the way is one of the biggest Ponzi schemes going if not the and countless other such plots over the decades. Now, speaking of which, there is another tie-in to such plots, like the thought of, say, rapping about blacks killing blacks. You know, there was a guy that said, that, that asked a bunch of these rhetorical questions. I believe his name was Morgan Freeman, the now disgraced actor who is being accused of being basically a perpetrator in the Me Too movement, which by the way has hardly next to no merit to it now because so many men are being accused of something that they never did, like in the case of Enzo Amore, for example. He asked these questions. Why is Black Death so popular? Why is it cool for us to rap about killing each other? I get it. It's just entertainment. But if that's the case, then why can't I rap about killing white people in every song? Why can't I rap about killing Jews, cops, politicians? and it'd be considered just entertainment. Some of y'all cringe just reading the last line. But if it's just entertainment, why does it matter? Who made Black Death the cool thing to glorify? Who made it cool for us to celebrate our own destruction? And I mean, you're never going to believe it. You're never going to believe it. You're never going to the Democrats. Because of course they did. Because of course they did. Like for instance, give a man some corn, feed him for a day. Teach him how to grow corn, it kills you and steals your land. How ironic is that? How ironic is that? It is so ironic. It is so ironic. It is, uh, you, you have, have you any idea? And, and look at all these people that you see next to my face. You know, these dozen and a half or so people secretly claim to rule our world. They don't rule our world, they just claim 
Universal rule of because they have all the money that anything in life can buy. You know, John J. Astor, Nathan Rothschild, David Rockefeller, Jacob Rothschild, David M. Rothschild, Evelyn Rothschild, David R. Rothschild, Prince Philip, you know, Sheridan Adelson, the guy who created the Power Rangers, Hein Savan, you know, Robert Cady, George Herbert Walker Bush and his son, George Walker Bush and the rest of their family, George Soros and the entire Clinton dynasty, the Black Pope, who we refer to as Adolfo Nicholas, Harry Kissinger, you know, and some of these guys were part of an ethnicity that, in fact, probably almost all of these people, but many of these people who secretly assumed that they rule our world were actually part of the wrongfully targeted ethnicity that were almost entirely genocided and forced into extinction some 75 years ago during Hitler's Holocaust. You know, you know, Rupert, Ro you know, Rupert Murdoch, of course, is one of them who secretly assumed control of our world. But you know, you have no idea how much of the world they assume control over. They assume control over it, but do they really control it? No, they don't. They control the educational system. They, can search, they control research institutions, the secret societies, the finances, politics, intelligence, religion, society as a whole. They assume control over it, but do they actually control it? No. They don't control it. They don't control it. They don't. Period. And and what about what about this this asshat? Some guy named Harry Anslinger. The Drug Enforcement Agency leader from 1930 to 1962 outlawed cannabis, and this led to the so-called War on Drugs that was really an Illuminati plot to silence civil writers and anti-war champs and enforce racism, social justice, and tobacco opium lumber monopolies all spearheaded by the Rothschilds and the Rothschilds. You're not going to believe it, but you should believe it because it is all happening right in front of your face. It is happening right now. It has been ongoing for over 250 years, for over two and a half centuries, for over 25 decades, and count, and count. You know, St. John the Baptist didn't write his three books of Revelation without a reason, because he had a pretty valid reason for having wrote these three books of Revelation, two of which aren't even included in the New or Old Testament of the Bible. In fact, only the first one is included in the last book of the New Testament and the last book in all of the Bible. The latter two books of Revelation of his were included in the sequel to the Bible, which was published some 300 some odd years after the publishing of the original King James Bible serves as some sort of third testament which just as closely weaves itself into the lore of the King James Bible itself while providing savagely historically accurate commentary and narratives 
on what will happen if we continue to tread down the path that we're treading down now. And, and by the way, by the way, if you're wondering why we are all going to hell in a handbasket, what you are seeing on your screen right now is irrefutable evidence of it. Proof. The burden of proof right there in front of you, and you're telling me that you still cannot see it? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Okay, explain this to me. How come Maximilian Robespierre, a Frenchman and Enlightenment thinker, despite all the bad things he did in his life, said one thing that somehow managed to negate all the bad things he ever did in his life? He said something that still, to this day, proves just as more truthful as it was yesterday and continues to prove increasingly true as time wears on. He said this, The secret of freedom lies in educating people, whereas the secret of tyranny is in keeping them ignorant and stupid and uninformed. Would you rather learn the secret of tyranny, or would you rather learn the secret of freedom? Personally, I'd rather learn the secret of freedom, but that's just me. And here's the thing. You people will not ever choose to believe this, but Hollywood is a new life hell on Earth, and so is Hawaii. So is all of California and all of New York. And so is all of Washington, D.C. They are all real life, living, breathing equivalents to hell. Which, by the way, is infinitely many times worse than the real life equivalents to hell that I've just now mentioned. You know, Hollywood, all of California, all of Hawaii, all of New York, all of Washington, D.C., you know, the whole nine yards, right? In fact, this whole world is a living, breathing hell. The only way, however, that we can make it feel like heaven is if we listen to God for once in our lives, for once, for once in our lives, we must listen to God because at some point He's going to close that window of opportunity because he, there's only so many warnings He can give us, by the way. There's only so many chances that even God Himself can give us. And you know, being this forgiving man that He is, at some point, he is going to look down on us for the last time, and he's going to say to us, like he should have done long, long ago, quite frankly, that he is sick and tired of our bullcrap and our games and our pussyfooting around, and he is going to say, had enough. And then he's going to send Jesus Christ down on a cross to redeem those who have actually used their faith in God as a gateway, not as a crutch, but as a gateway to better understand his will for humanity. And then and only then will everyone else who, by the way, will not take part in this privilege, only then will everyone else realize that their gooses have permanently been cooked, overly at least, and at that point it will have already been far too late. People, I'm telling you, you have no idea what's going to happen, it's only a matter of time.
Now, as crazy as this sounds, you guys are likely never going to believe me when I tell you this. But believe me, when I said that I was just getting started, I was not kidding. You know, you, you guys remember the second battle in the American Revolutionary War. You know, the shot her around the world, the Battle of Lexington and Concord. This battle is remembered with a state holiday, which used to be a decisive victory for the American militia at the time, which was once celebrated at one point every April 19th, which was the actual day of the battle that took place the year 1775, some 243 years ago, this past April, as of this recording. Now, here's what's funny. One of my Twitter friends, who I will not name because you already see it on your screen, has a birthday around that particular time. And a lot of other instances and coincidences have occurred within those particular periods of the year. For instance, 1889, Hitler's birthday. 1897, the first Boston Marathon. 1906, San Francisco's earthquake and subsequent fire. 1912, the Titanic sinks. That was on April the 15th of that year. A repeat of the 1906 earthquake and fires happened six years after pretty much to the day. And 1926, April 21st of that year, Queen Elizabeth is born. The following year, both the Pope Benedict XVI was born on that day. Poland, Warsaw, ghetto uprising that happens in 43 during World War II, April the 19th of that year. April the 17th, 18th, and 19th, the Cuba Bay of Pigs, 1969, April 17th, Robert Kennedy is assassinated, the Lebanon car bomb at the U.S. Embassy in 1983, around that same time period, the first episode of The Simpsons before they became a syndicated animated TV series on Fox, 1987. You know, 1989, Central Park attack on joggers. 1993, Rodney King gets beat up. Waco Colt Raid. 95, Oklahoma sitting body. 1999, Columbine. 2005, Pope Benedict XVI elected. 2007, Virginia Tech shooting. 2010, BP Deepwater Horizon explodes. 2011, India helicopter crash 23 people die as a result of that the Boston Marathon bombing and the Iran 7.8 magnitude earthquake as well as the explosion of the Texas fertilizer plant and the lockdown of the Boston bombing all happening around that same time of year two years later at the same time all within three to four days of each other. Have you people not noticed this trend yet? Okay, okay, get this, get this, get this. A guy named Larry McDonald exposes the Rockefeller's plan to supercapitalize and communize the world, New World Order style, but his plane was shot down by Democrats and White House conspirators as he was considering a presidential bid. Antonin Scalia, a Supreme Court Justice, fought for us, for our right to freedom, to security, to life, to liberty, to happiness and its pursuit. 
He was murdered mid-sleep by the deep state. Comey struck Clinton, Rockefeller, Rothschild, Obama, Bush. They were all conspirators in that. They were all behind it. And and here's here's another example. Those same Democrats who want us to turn in our weapons to them took over America's education system and as a result have been lying to us for generations and have not been teaching us about how the British demanded that the colonists turn in their weapons. The U.S. government demanded that the indigenous Native Americans turn in theirs. Hitler demanding that German turn in theirs. Stalin demand that the Soviets turn in theirs. Mao Zedong demand that his Chinese people turn in theirs. Castro demanding that the Cubans turn in theirs. Pol Pot demanding that the Cambodians turn in theirs. The South African government demanding that the South Africans turn in theirs. It's a process that is repeating itself the world over. Every single day. And this was before the Democrats took over. When the Democrats took over, we weren't allowed to learn these things anymore. By law, we were not allowed to. Because learning such things is illegal now. (laughs) Oh my God, man. You guys have no idea. Have you any clue yet? Have you people gotten a clue yet? Have you people gotten a clue? When America's students were among the top students in the world, there was a time when these same students were taught to beware the rise of a tyrannical dictatorship, which would be preceded by the disarming of national citizens and indigenous peoples as I've described just before. Now I know that it sounds like I'm probably repeating myself from the Weishaupt conspiracy thing that's been mentioned in a previous DVD style documentary of some sorts, but let me remind you now, the reason as to why I'm repeating said messages in different ways, mind you, and giving as many citations and examples as physically and psychologically and mentally and photographically possible is so you people can understand what you're up against and what you can do to let God take control of this and let Him handle this and meet your end of His deal in the process so that He doesn't have to do all the work for us anymore. We can do our fair share just as much as He's doing His. So Ida B. Wells, this Chicago newspaper owner, she pulled a Rosa Parks some 75 years before Rosa Parks actually pulled a Rosa Parks simply by not choosing to vacate her seat. Democrats will never mention her because she's a Republican. Equal rights activist Victoria Woodhull predated Hillary Clinton by about 145 years by becoming the first woman to run for America's presidency and her VP candidate was also the first black being was also the first black vice presidential candidate in history no other black candidate has run for the VP ticket since why because democrats won't allow them to which is why they rigged her three presidential bids 
entirely against her. They wouldn't let her win even though she was more qualified with one brain cell being used on her end than every Democrat ever in the history of mankind ever could with all of their collective brain cells within their respective brains put together. That's how smart she was. And the two brave men below her, these are two of the countless millions who died awaiting aid that never came all under Obama's watch as well as the watch of Clinton, Bush, Carter, Nixon, Rockefeller, Rothschild, and Weishaupt over the decades. The media will never mention this to you because they don't want you to know about it. But you already know, now don't you? And you have me to thank because I'm telling you about it. And I will never let you forget it either. And, and, and this guy, this, you know, this, this guy below the two that I mentioned just now. This guy. Jesus Christ. You know him, right? For many centuries, he's been telling us to turn the other cheek. He's been telling us to turn the other cheek. But some time ago, some time ago, God told him, okay, you know what? Turning the other cheek just isn't going to cut it anymore. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to fight fire with baking soda. You know how baking soda puts out a fire every time instead of water? Because putting water over a fire is not going to help nearly as much as putting baking soda over a fire. Putting baking soda over a fire is going to get rid of that fire quickly and very rightly at that. So don't turn the other cheek anymore because those days are long gone and they will never come back. Fight fire with baking soda. Vote red. Vote Republican. Ensure that the Democrats will be permanently absolved and dissolved from all responsibility because that's what they deserve and they're going to get an execution sentence. Hello everybody. You want to know what I learned today on my good friend Fully in Perspective's YouTube channel? Mankind <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I'm not making this up. You think I'm making this up? Go check out Lillian Perspectives. He's not making any of it. He's telling the truth. But I think George Orwell said it best during his conversation with Winston Churchill in 1948 when he had this to say. This, this is what he had to say to Winston Churchill during his conversation with him. And I think this pretty much sums up my views on the future of our civilization. Civilizations claim that they were founded on love or justice. Ours is founded upon hatred. In all worlds, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, trials, and self abasement. Everything else we shall destroy. Everything. We shall abolish the organism. Our neurologists are at work upon it now. There will be no loyalty except loyalty towards the party. There will be no laughter except the laugh of triumph or a repeated enemy. There will be no art, no literature, no science. There will be no curiosity, no enjoyment of the process of life. All competing pleasures will be destroyed. But always do not forget this. 
always there will be the intoxication of power constantly increasing and constantly growing so always every moment there will be the thrill of victory the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless if you want a picture of the future imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever if you are a man winston you are the last man and keep in mind Everything that George Orwell said to Winston Churchill during that little monologue I recorded of myself, it's all true. Alright, now I want you to consider something, alright? I want you to hear me out. You know about how when recorded history began, right? You know about it, don't you? Well, I'm going to tell you about it. You see, when recorded history began and humanity was born from next to nothing, we came about and everything was different. We didn't have computers or cars or houses like we do now. We lived in caves. Some six million years ago, we managed to come about and evolve. And it wasn't until around maybe a million or so years ago, or as late as three to four hundred thousand years ago, that we as human beings began to walk upright and on two feet instead of all fours like a dog would or a leopard would or a lion or a tiger you understand which instantly made us smarter than every other species known to man over the next few dozen millennia man began to evolve as did woman and child and it was there that humanity began to live and make one's own way of life while hunting for and gathering food. The true test of human endurance began eventually when the Ice Ages started some 12 to 13,000 years ago. Temperatures dropped dramatically, glaciers began to form, Waters began to freeze up and turn to ice. And man had to search for warmer ground. And nature, being the mother of us all that she is, through everything that she had at our ancestors, and they managed to somehow survive. When we began to transfer from before the common era to after the death of Christ from BC to AD a great change was going on and that change is a change that continues to this very day even now some half a million to million years later we are in the greatest economic and physical and mental struggle in our history. Why? Well, I'd like to show you about how there is still hope despite the fact that I lost my faith in humanity a long time ago. So, let's count the ways. First of all, potential. Potential is a way of being able to show that you've got some fight left in you. It's a way of expressing your undying devotion to a cause. For many, potential runs in the blood and in the veins. For others, it can be felt in the bones and in the marrow. Now, right about now, you're probably questioning me and asking me a question such as, Skull, why is potential so important in the restoration of hope when the answer has already manifested itself inside you and has remained therein the whole goddamn time. Nonetheless, I'll answer this question anyway. You see, folks, 
Potential is a key factor in the way one makes a future in this world, which is changing every second of every minute of every hour of every day. It's a world of endless uncertainty. Potential drives us to get better at our respective crafts, and it makes us stronger having been burned in our flesh to ensure that hope and change aren't just what others make it out to be. Like like Castro or Maduro or Zidane or Obama or Bush or Clinton or any Democrat in general. Potential is real. It is there, people. It is there. Okay, so I remember talking about devotion at least once or twice, perhaps in just this video alone. Now, devotion being the excelsior that it is, is your fuel tank. It is your sword, your heart, your shield. It's pretty much everything you need and nothing that you don't. It's something that we're all required to have in our lives no matter what happens. Because God instilled that into us before we were ever thought of or conceived. Because He's God. He can do that. Now, devotion is a dedication to a cause. It is permanent decadence. It's a lifetime of understanding, of wisdom. Why do we need this? Why is it required for us to get through this dark age in life? Do we need it because it's there? Do we yearn for it because it stands in front of us waiting for us to obtain it? Do we recommend it to the devotionalist as some sort of mental medicine? Because it gives those kinds of people a reason to believe again. Well, here's how I look at it. Devotion is a catalyst for the end of the Dark Ages, and it should be used as such so as to make us more driven to fight for what we know or think to be right, but more specifically, what we know to be right. Furthermore, devotion is the light at the end of that proverbial tunnel which we are obviously in. We're in that tunnel. We just haven't seen the light yet, but when we do, there's no going back. we got to go to the end of that tunnel because the light's going to be there at the end of it. That's never going away unless we choose for it to go away, at which point we'll be stuck in the dark forever. And even though we are too far away to see that light yet, we're not too far off. In addition, devotion makes us better. It makes us faster. It makes us stronger. It makes us wiser. It makes us more energetic and more determined than the moment before. So to summarize that which I have just now mentioned, devotion is our rock. It is our foundation. Now, some 20 centuries ago, about 2,000 years, about 200 decades or two millennia ago, in the year, I would say, 32 or 31 or 33 or 30 A.D., somewhere in between, we faced our greatest challenge in the form of a huge change, a huge transformation, transfiguring our ancient world known as religion, namely Christianity, which was named, ironically enough, after Jesus Christ, a being whose hands were permanently penetrated by the nails that scarred his hands, the same Jesus Christ who is mainly God in a human form and also at the same time his only son. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a ton of religions out there, you know, Buddhism, Judaism, Atheism, just to name three. So, technically, a person is entitled to believe whatever they choose to. 
And not everyone has to believe in the same thing if they don't want to. Like, for instance, what I'm telling you now. You don't necessarily have to believe that, but it's required for your further evolution. It's required for your long-term survival. If you don't believe this, you're, you're not going to live to see the end of it. But you are allowed to make a choice based on what I've said. And you don't even have to be motivated by what I've said. You probably already made that choice now. Hence why everyone is entitled to believe what one chooses to. Now, based on what I've seen and heard and witnessed with my eyes, my ears, and my senses in the whole, religion is some kind of a dying breed in this ever-evolving world. It's, it's practically going extinct. But at the same time, it's also one of the most crucial elements of survival because we all need something to believe or something to believe in. Now, since this is likely to be true than not, and most likely to be true specifically, then, I mean, considering that, we're all going to need to summon the strength deep inside us that God himself gave us when he first made us from nothing, from dust and air, from thin wind. We need it because it is his will for humanity. It is his will. We need to find a way to find it within ourselves to believe again because as I've pointed out, it's crucial, it's vital to have a bit of that religion in your soul, right? Now, you don't have to agree with me to the T when I tell you this. So like I said, you judge for yourself. You believe what you think is right. But in the end, no matter how one looks at it, we're going to die anyway. We're mortal. That's all we're good for, mortality. Just like all living things. All stars, all constellations, all planets, they die. Just like we do. And no matter how one looks at it, it's not going to matter as to how, when, or where we perish, or who perishes, or even why, or under what circumstance, or what given happenstance, or by some probability, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter if you believe in eternal life or eternal death. It's not going to matter who says about where. Because someday, fate itself, namely death, is going to find us and take us all to our final destinations individually, one by one. That's why you should live and let live while the living is good. Now, given the potential, the devotion, the religion, having, if you use all three of those things in equilibrium, in such a distinct fashion to where God himself would approve of it. And there's not many ways you can't, there's not many ways to screw this up. Not that anybody's going to find one way, but there are people who are trying to find a way now to fuck that up. But here's the thing. With your potential devotion and religion, it shouldn't be hard to get by in this world. But it's not going to be easy either. And despite that, nothing's going to be impossible unless we allow it to be. Now, the way I look at it, we should live to the fullest because no matter what happens, there will be brighter days ahead. But wait! What happens if we get to those brighter days? Will they last a long time? Will they be short-lived? Will they be iffy? Will, will they even come at all? Let me tell you something. I don't know that. You don't know that. Nobody knows that except for God. But I can tell you this. If everyone killed themselves, if everyone decided to just give up, just as my mom told me before when I was younger, there wouldn't be anyone left to save. There wouldn't be anyone left standing. 
Now I want you to think about that while you're watching this video because at some point it's going to soak in. It's going to soak in regardless. It's, it's not going to make a difference at this point. And, and why the hell should it? What is the difference at this point? Is there a difference at all to be made? Anyway, here's the thing. Okay? Now, before I move on to the next topic, I just want to point out Trump did not collude with the Russians. Democracy colluded with Britain. Russia didn't have anything to do with it. Britain did. That's why they're still staging this fraudulent smear campaign against him, even though he's been proven to be right the whole goddamn time. I'll tell you how this went down. Somebody pretends to be pro-Clinton and fed false information to a guy named Rick Wilson, who has extremely close ties to Evan McMullen, who gave a dossier to John McCain, who gives the dossier to the intelligence agency. The intelligence agency, controlled by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, leaked it to BuzzFeed, and everybody in the bullshit media lost their shit. They, they still will not stop reporting it, even though it's been proven two years in advance to be completely fabricated, to be full of crap. Now, here's the thing. On to my next topic now. Millennials, as dumb as we are, we're probably the stupidest generation that has ever had the privilege of walking in this world. I mean, we're so dumb. People like me within my age group, you know, because I was born in this generation, so I know. But millennials are so retarded that 11,000 people voted for a dead gorilla. A dead gorilla. Millennials are so retarded that one out of every five of them, namely those within my age group, think Joseph Stalin, despite having killed over 20 million people, was a hero. A quarter of all millennials within my age group, and I grew up in this generation so I know, do not know what the Holocaust is. You know? Fuck. And you know what's funny? What's funny is that half of all millennials in the nation, which I was born and raised in, say that they would rather live in a shithole country, a socialist or communist or fascist or dictatorship-based country. By the way, North Korea and Venezuela and... London and Iran are very, very, very awesome this time of year. You should go there if you believe that a socialist or communist country is the place to be. Because it's obviously not. But assuming that it is, let's just say that it is, those four places would be great. And I'm just being satirical here. Let me, let me tell you something. Most people, most millennials are incapable of understanding freedom because they want a bunch of free shit. They cannot cook for themselves. They don't even know how to run a dishwasher or how to wash a dish. And they want to donate to 21-year-old Kylie Jenner to help her become the world's youngest billionaire. A billionaire! Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, let me let me tell you something. Millennials are so retarded that thousands of them all over the country walked out of class on a Wednesday morning to protest gun violence. Think about that. 
These are the same people who think Obama's the best president because he's the only one that they remember in their lifetime. They give people like myself a very shit name. And believe me, the retarded in my generation outnumber people such as myself, the intelligent, the woken, at least a hundred thousand to one, at least. You wonder why we ended up raising a generation of kids who, despite being jailbait age material, want to shake their dicks or their asses or their tits in front of a camera. And, and that shit goes viral for whatever reason, but a video like this gets a copyright claim despite being completely uploaded with a Creative Commons license and protected under the 1976 Copyright Act via Section 107, namely the Fair Use Section. When I upload stuff like this, it's my obligation to remind you that this is being made with fair use under intense consideration. Fair use means you can borrow something from a TV show or a movie and use it for educational or entertainment based purposes. But the people on YouTube are too retarded to see that because they consist of three Rothschild ass lickers who give no shits about you or I. So let that sink in. And you wonder why humanity is so unbelievably fucked. Because we won't even recognize the fucking problem, even though it's obviously been a problem for generations. Now, I don't know if you care to know this or not, but I care to know this because I already know it. And I don't need to know it because I already know it because I've seen it for myself. So it has to be believed on my end. So I believe it wholeheartedly. It's the fucking truth. But you people need to know this more than I do. That's why I'm making this documentary for you. I'm making this all for you. I already know this. I'm just trying to make sure that you know it too and are actually willing to be the solution and do something to fix the fucking problems mentioned herein. Like I am. That is my goal here in making this documentary. By the way, this is not the first. If you want to see the first, check out Weiss House Conspiracy on my YouTube channel, specifically. That will further prove what I've been telling you this whole time. I want you to take into consideration every fact that I dish out to you in such documentaries. By the way, Weiss House Conspiracy was just first of many, and this one, Rothschild's Dynasty, is just the second of many more to come. So let me, let me explain this to you, alright? Let me tell you something. Understand? You see, Frank Zappa, the rock star turned classical avant-garde composer, said that schools and institutions of higher learning us to be ignorant and give us whatever equipment is needed for our said schooling to be a functioning, retarded ignoramus. Thirty years after his death, whatever he said in that particular moment in his life proves more biblically accurate and historically truthful with each passing day. He 
keep in mind, that's not to mention all the other stuff that I pointed out before. And let me remind you now. Let me ask you something. Why would the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Sorosas, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Reeds, the Pelosi's, why would they, the slave masters, who enslaved you, tortured you, raped you, read, and branded you like an animal, turn around and give you a religion, notably the gospel of prosperity, to empower you, when you know that God needs no religion, because he transcends that, because he is everything, as made everything in his image to be mortal somewhat no less with the sole purpose of every creation life's man to become one with God and what if I told you that say that elections were completely and utterly rigged and that voting is only used to pacify the public Remember what Mark Twain said? You know, Samuel Clemens is his girlfriend. You know what Mark Twain said, right? He said that if elections allow us to elect the right people in, then voting would be illegal. We wouldn't be allowed to vote. And I'm not quoting the exact words that he said, but as far as I know, what he said in that particular statement, which I have just now improvised, just like what Frank Zappa said, like what this whistleblower named Larry McDonald said, what they said in their lives all say the same thing. You need to wake the fuck up. And believe me, you know in your heart that I am not lying when I say this because it proves absolutely truthful each and every single day. And that's not counting the fact that millennials are so beyond fucked in this day and age. So much more now than they were back then when they were just little kids. I know because I grew up in that generation, so I understand it a lot more than people care to let on. And that's not the fact that suddenly, you understand everything that's going on. Understand? And this guy named Byron C. Faith, the greatest prophet of our time, possibly ever, you know, he made a four hour recording regarding blood dress and shit holes that had told him. Remember me telling you that Hollywood was used to feel like the world was in hell? Some of will say that hell is practically located in the exact of the path. Alright, now I'm going to point out the fact to you. You're not going to like it, but at the end of the day, guess what? That does not excuse the fact that what I'm about to tell you. Your 100% correctness personified, not political, not geographical, not special, universal, as a whole. It is proven to be correct in every single way and light, form, 
world of fashion and disguise, but I'm going to lay out some factoids about the generation that I had the good fortune and simultaneous blessing of growing up in the world. Explain to me. Alright? Here is the thing. Get this. Two of every three millennials. And, and believe me, you know this to be true, so don't you dare deny it. Two of every three millennials have no retirement savings whatsoever because they cannot afford to save up because of the fact that life costs far too much and will obviously cost that much more for each passing day. Now, seven of every ten millennial non-homeowners find it damn near impossible to get a mortgage. Many millennials may permanently stay single as a result, and many cyber millennials are also alcoholics because they abuse alcohol and they consider it to be a way of coping with the stress that is life. In addition to the fact that millennials, as a whole, are the most obese generation that ever walked the face of this earth, but they also come from broken homes and are also, as a result, the most selfish, the dumbest, the most insensitive, the most easily offended, the most gullible, the most cynical, the most oblivious, the most entitled, the most mentally ill, the most antisocial, and the smartest generation ever. And yet, they are probably many of our world's most defining definitions of what I'd like to call selective retardation, a.k.a. democracy, a.k.a. liberalism, a.k.a. Rothschildism, a.k.a. Illuminism. They may never know what it's like to work an honest day in their lives, as they have it far better off than any other generation before them put together, and yet they know at the very least to work diligently at their respective crafts and at their jobs, whatever they may have, because it is the way to live. You live with one goal in mind, to reach your full potential, as God gave you that ability upon first being created by your first energy and your parents. And as a result, many people will not see that, although they know it's true, but they do not care to let it on because they're afraid that they're going to die because telling the truth is illegal now, apparently. Four of every ten millennials either want or are making their own smart homes, and yet most of them live almost entirely within their smart devices, tablets, smartphones, their iPods, their iPads, or whatever. In addition, three of every ten millennials in mind, and the millennials are born in 1981 and 1999, will not go to college because they know what I know. That it is nothing more than a scam, a money pit, a shit pit, and a death trap. And yet, seven of every ten millennials believe that their employer's values are also theirs as well. Seven of every ten millennials see businesses as having a positive social impact. And yet, nine of every ten of them say that businesses cannot succeed just by some financial success alone. Now here's the kicker. 
You're never going to believe me when I tell you this. Or maybe you do, or you choose not to let it on, even though you know you do. See, 75% of all employees around the world will be millennials, which, by the way, are the generation that I grew up in, that are born in 1981 to 1999. However, four of every five of them admit that on the spot recognition, matter of more than positive formal views, and roughly six of every ten of them will not take a job that prohibits the accessing and use of social media. Millennials, in addition, also last far less in terms of job time compared to even their most recent generation that came before them, Generation X, or as I like to call it, Generation Z. Millennials also, in addition, last an average of nearly two years at a job before having to relocate to another one, so they have far less spending power as a result than the older generation in many cases. Let's point a few things out. Millennials are most likely given peer pressure and are therefore heavily, if not entirely, influenced by their peers and what they believe to be their friends. Get this. You're not going to believe me when I tell you this, but I insist that you listen. You should hear input and affirmation on decisions we saw. How many do you think would depend on their ears to make every single decision? You're not going to believe me. Eighty-five percent turn to ears to make decisions. Or roughly eighty-five percent. I don't know the exact percentage. I'm speculating. I'm not going to assume. Now let's shit on the two-time loser 
serve a presidential candidate, perhaps the worst presidential candidate in the history of the world, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now, I'm going to point out a few quotes of hers, along with the retorts that I made in my reading. Listen carefully. Half of all supporters are what I'd like to call a basket of forum. Really? Wouldn't that make your supporters a bunch of living abortions then? I mean, it's Newton's law in full effect, my friend. We came, we saw, he died. We came, we saw, we put the ball down. The same is true with the Democratic Party or lack thereof. If I want to knock a story off, I'd say, let's just change my answer. You ever shake your head bald while you're at it? It's all your stories here, you want to make one page. Absolutely polished and spotted fucking people. People are sending out the sentence And yet your dynasty house is made of cards and seeds. Fuck off! I have to see you shit kickers every day. I'm not gonna talk to you too! Once you marry the one who left his women and children. I mean think about it, you married him, you have to put up with him. What the hell are we doing here? There's no money here. Get me out of here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, see, that's not how life works. Your Democratic Party and their cohort got themselves, yourself, and ourselves into this. And now you're going to suffer as well. Boom. If you see bigotry, of politics. If you see violence, condemn it. If you see a bully, stand up there. Well, I see 63 million of us all over this bastardized country we call out of one of incorporated, aka in the United States of America. This is not exactly what I said. I just got that one out. When I declare you as being the embodiment of all three atrocities which you have just now mentioned. That's right. Please tell us about how well you play your game when you're fucking us up the ass every day just by existing. It's been four years since you said that. And we're still interested. So confirm what we know about you in inside job. I admire my Sanders. Courage, tenacity, and vision. I did not comment on that for a specific reason because it did not deserve a comment. Instead, I responded with a gift that applied just went full retard, my friend. Here is always with us, but we don't have time for that. Not now. Do you hear the scene of 63 people killing democracy? Because that's what's happening right now. Women are the largest unhappy red bar in the town. And yet, a horse like yourself, both in my side, should have never been conceived by your birth givers there or holding the female sex back by around five I will get the NRA set down because I become president. And we can turn the handgun! We can do it! Why don't we have President of the 45 himself, Donald John Trump, shoot you in the face instead? That's And how come your party and their tour caused you the mall in the first town? Then practice what you preach because you've done no good for anyone at any point of your life simply due to
what you caused them to be doing. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 take into consideration a few things. You people need to wake up. I do not just make this stuff up, people, just for the sake of making it up. I make it up to you because it's the truth, because it's what God tells me every day, and He shows it to me. You smart phone, the laptop, the tablet, everything around and within me. And beyond. And I tell you this because it's Absolutely. Now you're not going to believe me when I tell you this, but you, you know this thing called heart, right? Heart is essentially, by the way, you has packed 4,680,605. That's heart. It's also responsible for being the Rothschild way of weaponizing and using harm as a means of weaponized weather control. There are three key elements. Harm is essentially a means, a form, a fashion, and a method provided to cause interference with and even complete disruption of communications over a very large it is essentially weather modification that is entirely possible by just maybe altering upper atmospheric balloons of atmospheric particles which will act as a lens for focusing the bus. It alters upper atmospheric patterns and altering solar absorption patterns by constructing one or more moons, atmospheric particles act as a lens and focus device, which again can be summed up by three words. Weaponized weather control. The third and most damning element of the disaster Up by the fact that this excuse of a law allows the Earth's magnetic field to be either decreased, disrupted at approximate altitudes, modified, or even entirely decimated and or eliminated, meaning we won't have a magnetic field anymore. Thanks to the rock sheet. Rockefellers, the Rosas, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Reed, the Pelosi, the Waltons, the Bruce's, the Cavendish, the Devonishes, the Romanovs, the Sinclairs, the Warblers, the Winsters, the Nosey, the Coots, the Hopkins. Popular. 
population control, depopulation, deforestation. In the church, in the government, in the school, and in the media. One notch above that. Global resource control. Courtesy of Carlisle, Dyncourt, Locke, Burke, United Nations. One notch above that. Global financial control. Including the Rothschild and Rockefeller Central Bank, tax revenue, internal revenue service, the Bank of International Settlement, and so on. One notch above that. The Freemason Lodges, shadow government, and secret society. United Lodge, the Lodge of the Nine Sisters, of course, the Nine Sisters, the best thing comes up with the four Babylon and Satan, the Antichrist, and the I wonder if you sell a bomber from the Nine Sisters that the Lodge takes to itself or not. The Blue Lodge, Solar Bowl, the Scottish Rite, KG, number of different including the FBI, including the CIA, including the DOJ. One notch above that are two different sub-hierarchies. Round table think tanks in Bilderberg and the Trilateral Commission in Club of Rome, the RIUA, the CFR, and the Committee of 300, which is no Balfoy, Beal, Bell, Bolton, Bush, Cameron, Campbell, Carney, Carrington, Coolidge, Delano, Douglas, Ford, Gardner, Graham, Hamilton, Harriman, Hines, Lichtenstein, Oppenheim, Roosevelt. Wilson, Schiff, those One notch above that. The Council of the Gentlemen, Washio, Roots, Cabinets, the Medici, Panel, Hobson, Blue, Lanthony, Three Shrub, and Hobson, and all the notes. Roger Thurlow, Golden Arms, and Thurlow. One notch above that.
I don't really care enough to recall where home you can find that, but if you look up in the search engine, David M. Rothschild, Reptilian, you should be able to find that 35 second clip. I wonder if that's why Barack Obama's in love with him so much, just as much as he is with his transgender wife, originally born a man named Mike, named Michelle Obama. And yeah, Michelle Obama was born a man known as Big Mike.
on the foundations of what they need to know to survive. Because if you cannot do that, then I promise you, it will turn out to be democracy kisses. Republican kisses. And pawns in the great oculus Satanism, Weishaupism, Rothschildism, Rockefellerism, 